Welcome to Other Than a Biz 24. Today, we are going to talk about higher education. Now, talking about higher education, you know, recently advanced level examination results were out. Now, all the students who took part, who sat for this examination, are now at a junction where they see a lot of opportunities when it comes to higher education. Because, you know, right now there's higher demand and so much of opportunities in the market locally, globally, and parents are also are at this junction to decide, you know, what's best for their children. Now, we are here today through Other Than a Biz 24 to support your decision making. And for this conversation, I'm joined by Dr. Diane Rajapaksa, Managing Director of eSoft Metro Campus and also the President of Sri Lanka Association of Non-State Higher Education Institutes. A very big hello to you, Dr. Diane Rajapaksa. Hello. Thank you very much for joining with us and to start off this conversation, you as an expert in the education industry who has been there for two decades almost and more probably, yeah. um, how do you see this, the transformation and the journey of private higher education? Yeah, thank you Ashishini. I think it's a very good question because some of the parents, uh, I mean if you go to uh, still the rural areas of this country, uh, a lot of parents think that, uh, you know, if your child doesn't get uh, an opportunity mm. uh, in free education in a state university, mm. your child's future is completely gone, you mm. know, there's no, mm. no such path. But that is actually now uh, is a misconception because uh, not like the 80s and the 90s, mm. right, uh, private higher education in Sri Lanka has you know uh, grown over the last two decades massively right? yeah. uh, in fact actually you, know, you were mentioning about our association Slanchi, Sri mm. Lanka Association of Non-State Higher Education Institute mm. where I'm the president which is actually an association of all private universities in the country mm. so we have 25 of them now mm. so which means the Ministry of Higher Education approved private high, uh, universities we have 25 oh, okay. right in addition to that, there are also so many colleges mm -hmm. which are affiliated to foreign uh, universities, right. which are offering foreign degrees locally or maybe offering transfer programs. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, if you if you see if num somebody has a desire that need they need to get a degree and they need to have enter into higher education, now there are endless opportunities. Mm -hmm. I would say that almost you know you can study any stream uh, whether it is engineering, whether it is you know biomedical, mm -hmm. uh, psychology, law, anything you can study mm -hmm. but uh, maybe you might have uh, sort of uh, some idea whether still you have opportunity to study medicine yeah, yeah that is actually still it's opening up uh, there may be a few gray areas but I think mm. eventually even private medical degrees will be uh, freely available uh, in the country mm -hmm. at the moment mm, you know if you if you want to achieve something if you want to if you have a desire that I must get qualified in this particular field mm -hmm. and I need to enter into this particular professional career there are endless opportunities available here. Mm, right. Interesting. And, yeah. and also, I, I must say, because there was a recent study mm -hmm. uh, done by the British Council, mm -hmm. and Sri Lanka has become uh, the number two, right. second uh, from all the countries in the world for British transnational education. Mm. So, I mean, we are only second to China. Okay. So, you can see that, you know, with 22 million population in the country, where China's population probably 100 times more than ours, right? Mm. Uh, whereas we are second in that, which means that you you have enough of uh, you know education. We have more British flavour than the others, yeah. but still Australian uh, universities, uh, American mm. uh, transfer programs, Canadian universities, all these things mm. are available in the country. If you just look out, yeah, uh, you will find that. It's available. Now, uh, interesting, you mentioned that Sri Lanka is ranked second in the British TNE. Is yeah. this because parents are more interested in sending their children abroad or is, has this become a trend? <laughs> uh, yes, in the uh, past uh, year or so, I think there was a little bit of an increased trend in, you mm. know, uh, the need for parents to see whether they, they can send their children for mm -hmm. overseas education. Mm -hmm. But actually, we have not become second place just because of people who are going and studying in UK. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at how many Sri Lankans go and study in Britain or Australia, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that there is a significant number, but mm -hmm. that is not the largest okay. Uh, component, mm. right? How we have become second with the British transnational education is because of the the franchise delivery options that are available in Sri Lanka, right? So, right? Which means that you can do the same British degree what you go and study in UK yeah. here in an affiliated college. Mm -hmm. You do you do you believe that in Sri Lanka you have more than fifty British universities represented? 
right, by some institution. Uh, so, which means that uh, you know, uh, which is readily, freely available right. if you are looking for options. Yeah. Now, as much as we talk about how much we have uh, British qualifications or any other foreign qualifications here in Sri Lanka, still there is this trend of parents. I do not know whether this is the competition between the young generations and the parents coming on board. Parents still feel sending their children abroad to follow a degree is better than following the degree here in Sri Lanka. What is your thought about this? Uh, you use the word better. Is it better? <laughs> uh, that is of course questionable. You know, when, 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 when from an affluent family, when they can afford to send their children uh, abroad for mm -hmm. higher studies, mm -hmm. uh, they, they usually did that. Mm -hmm. Not only now, even probably 50 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at some of our, you know, uh, political leaders have sent their children even in the 1950s and 60s for overseas universities, yeah, right? Yeah. So, which means when, when you have the fi uh, required financial background and, you know, uh, the capacity, mm. uh, you send your children to probably maybe to differentiate. Mm -hmm. You can say that, okay, my child uh, got educated in this university, in mm. this country and mm. so on, right? Yeah. And which may create some value also, especially uh, getting that international flavor, you know, mm -hmm. uh, adjusting into new, uh, new uh, um, culture and mm -hmm. adapting into international community, working with different nationalities and all that. I think that international flavor mm -hmm. is good. Mm -hmm. But only thing is, uh, with the, the question is now private education in the West has actually uh, gone up, uh, you know, you, yeah. you, it's very costly, mm -hmm. right? Inflation, not only in Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. inflation has affected all those countries also. So, mm -hmm. the cost of living, finding our job yeah. is not easy. Yeah. So, actually, I don't think that is the best option yeah. uh, when you cannot afford to right. do that. For example, if you are to sell your land or property yeah. or borrow money to send your child to overseas, mm. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always saying that that is not the best option for you. Right. And also, even for a you know child from an affluent family, still it may not be the best because especially when you go for your undergraduate degree, mm -hmm. uh, that is where your foundation is laid, mm. right? Uh, whatever career, yeah. that is where your let's say for example, you're doing an engineering degree. Mm. Ideally, if you want to get the best engineering, you know, foundation, hmm. you must do uh, some engineering job, hmm. right? Uh, for example, let's say I'm doing civil engineering. Yeah. If you can at least, you know, uh, work in a construction site, hmm. that will give you that relevant experience. Hmm. You call it relevant experience. Yeah. IT guy should work for IT company, yeah. right? <laughs> Not in a, you know, pizza hut or on a food hmm. outlet. Hmm. But when you go to the West, the jobs what you get are not the relevant industry jobs. Mm. So, that is where you make a big difference. Now, you see a person who uh, uh, get work experience while studying mm. will transform into better professionals. So, I think in, the, in those countries, if you send your child overseas, mm -hmm. the quality of education in terms of the infrastructure, maybe quality of academics might be sometimes better, but I still doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, here you have yeah, better qualified course. academics, right? Yeah. But then definitely when you are looking at the relevant experience and the overall experience that what the student gets, mm -hmm. it may not be the best. Yeah. So therefore, I, I strongly recommend, and my recommendation is uh, you, you do your first degree here in Sri Lanka. If you want to get that international flavor, okay, uh, you, you can probably send it to send them to do the latter part of the degree, maybe to complete the degree yeah. or maybe to do a postgraduate studies. Mm. Actually, my son uh, studied at Gateway College. Mm. I got him to do the first degree here. Right, okay. Right, uh, because I, I would have easily sent him to, you know, of any, course, any yeah. country. Yeah. But, but I thought that is for best for him because he wanted to do IT. Mm -hmm. So, I got him to work in IT company while doing the IT uh, studies. Mm -hmm. So, which has actually given him a very good foundation. Mm -hmm. Now, he's reading a master's overseas because I want him to get that international exposure and all that. That's amazing. I think that is the best uh, way That's forward. That's the right mix of experience right that is coming. Experience, knowledge, yeah. experience, like literally all attributes coming yeah. on board. And um, before we move further, I would also like to ask you, since you are an education expert who has been in the industry for two decades, Kids. What has been your role in contributing towards the education industry? Uh, actually, I have been uh, initially contributing as a lecturer. So, yes. I, I started my lecturing career uh, when I was a medical undergraduate mm -hmm. in the 90s. So, right. that's actually now it is almost uh, three decades as a lecturer. 
Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> so still I contribute because you know, even despite of my busy schedule as mm. a managing director of a, a you know group, okay. still I, I, I find it very, you know, I, I'm so passionate in mm -hmm. teaching. So still I want to get into a classroom if I have time. But sometimes, you know, uh, because of the time uh, constraints, sometimes now I at least go into uh, delivery of uh, in online mode. Mm. So at least I can share mm. my knowledge and I have done a lot of train the trainer uh, kind of uh, session yes. so that my academic staff are, you know, groomed to uh, train the students. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, actually now car my current role as pre president of uh, Slanshi. Mm. So now we are actually working together. Mm. So it's not it's not my company only, right? Mm. I told you there are 25 universities. Okay. So now we are actually taking various initiatives. Recently, actually, we, we got the, the student uh, visa matter sorted out in Sri Lanka. Oh, there was no special student visa category in Sri Lanka. So therefore, if you want to attract international students, they would like to have a visa for the entire duration of study. The no. is a three-year degree, yeah. rather than going to immigration and renewing yeah. every year, yeah. you need to have a visa that is granted for three years, right? Yeah. And that is where I, you are encouraged to come here. Exactly. So we we are now actually clearing those some of the uh, you know grey areas and red tapes we had mm. in the uh, industry, mm. so that we can actually promote Sri Lanka as education hub. Yeah. So uh, my work actually, apart from working for my company, I also uh, work with other uh, you know leading experts in the field. Uh, in policy formulation. Uh, mm. So now these days national education reforms are going on. So I'm actually uh, involved representing in involved in all that as well as working together. Mm. Because when it's an industry, uh, it's important that you collaborate. Of course. Of course you can compete. Mm. <laughs> You're competing with other <laughs> universities, but that is not, not uh, you, that's only a narrow, you know, narrow vision. Yeah. If you want to really take it to the next level, give our, give our children real, you know, international standard education, mm. I think international students must come into Sri Lanka. Yeah, that's interesting. I think uh, all this time we are focused about sending our kids abroad or the children after soon after A-levels, you are in a hurry to send them abroad. But whereas now the country is uh, in the process of developing where we are trying to attract foreign students as well. On this discussion, we would now like to take a break and be back. Welcome back after the break on Other Than a Biz 24. So as we were in discussion with Dr. Diane Rajapaksa, I would like to continue. Now, since you are also the managing director of eSoft Metro Campus, I saw and there is a lot of talk about how you all have introduced these scholarship schemes for after A-level students. Let's talk about these schemes and who can apply and what's the process like. Yeah, actually, Ascension is a new initiative uh, mm -hmm. taken by ESO Metro Campus. We have done uh, so many, you know, pioneering steps in education. So these are also one of those such things mm -hmm. where we want, we found that, and since you know, ESO is available in all, all all locations in the country, I operate about forty branches. Mm -hmm. So we found that you know there are a lot of kids, children mm -hmm. whose parents cannot afford. Mm -hmm. uh, private higher education. Mm -hmm. So that is why we thought of you know introducing this scholarship scheme. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, it is giving you a scholarship for you to study for a British degree. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take uh, Ministry of Higher Education also has a loan scheme, yeah. but that is only for local degrees. Yes. Now, the difference in this one is you will get a, Brit a scholar to study for a British degree. Okay. So it can be IT, management, fashion design, so diverse fields, mm -hmm. engineering yeah. including. So you can select your stream. So anyone who has passed A-levels, mm. right? But of course, this is something we select on merit basis. So just mm. passes may not be enough. Mm. It depends on how, what, what kind of students apply for this of program. Uh, there'll be, you know, all, we will have impartial selection via our expert panel. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyone who has sat and got through their A-levels either in 2023 or 24, right. that means this year or the previous year, will be eligible to apply. <coughs> A-level, any stream is okay, mm -hmm. right? Uh, even art stream or mm -hmm. commerce stream, they can apply for the scholarship program. So as I told you that the uh, selection will be based on uh, A-level results, merit, yeah. as well as your other, you know, uh, factors such as your extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, your financial background. So those factors also will be taken into consideration when select granting the scholarships. Okay, so you mentioned that this scholarship is granted as a loan. 
is it not as a grant yeah because uh, we, we one thing uh, you know sometimes when you give everything free right yeah. uh, people have this dependent uh, mentality yeah, that's right for example true. we find that sometimes you know the the, the students who get from uh, free education from the state universities even want government to give them a job Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. rather than they yeah, are they keep demanding. In, uh, keep demanding right? <laughs> yeah. uh, government can employ some of those people, but you mm -hmm. know, assuring a job for everyone mm -hmm. is not possible. Yeah. So that is why actually I wanted to deviate from this uh, grant to loan. So when when you are taking a loan, you must have self confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, if you don't have self confidence that I can pay this back, mm -hmm. so they will not take this. So therefore, this is actually trying to produce a citizen mm -hmm. who is more ethical as well as who is more, uh, you know, confident mm -hmm. and uh, uh, contribute to our uh, society. That is one thing. Mm. Uh, second thing is actually, you now in you know, looking at a scholarship program, I don't want to, you know, give the scholarship this year and stop it, stop that next year. Yeah. Sustainability yeah. is very, very important. The so continuity therefore, also. Continuity. Mm. So to ensure that one only, I thought this, uh, you know, loan would better mm. because uh, when, when the students start paying back, which is also actually they will have one year grace period after qualifying. Mm. So that means if you do a three year degree, mm. your repayment start after four years. Yeah. <laughs> so while having got a job and then you can start paying back. Yeah. So I think that will give us uh, some uh, ability to uh, continue this program to mm. give more scholarship in the future. And we are actually managing this via a special uh, organization, mm. a non-profit organization uh, called LEAP Foundation, mm. Learn, Earn and Pay Foundation. So Learn, that's earn and pay great. foundation. Okay, interesting. So, so we have created an independent body mm -hmm. to manage these scholarships. Let's let's talk about this uh, Leap Foundation as well. What is the exact role of this Leap Foundation when it comes to uh, this actually? Actually, as I I, I told, I mean, ESOF took the lead and you know started this. Yes. But I don't want to limit there. Yeah. That's why I wanted to create a separate uh, independent organization called. Leaf Foundation, mm. um, because my uh, vision vision is that I want to you know connect with a lot of other people mm. who can be donors and supporting this particular program, yeah. especially you know Sri Lankan expats. Yeah. Right now, if you take if you take a Sri Lankan expat, they have taken free education from this country and gone and working for a uh, working for the West. Mm. So we have lost them. Mm. So at least they should plant another seed, uh, at least to compensate, yeah, right? Yeah. So which they can do by becoming a donor for Leap Foundation. So what I want to do is not only offer scholarships with uh, with ESOFT mm. uh, via this foundation in future, mm. second stage, third stage, you will be able to get a scholarship to study with other private universities in the uh, country. Mm -hmm. So that is so with a long term vision, mm -hmm. only we form this Leap Foundation. So they will do the selection, they will do the negotiation with the universities, yeah. they will do all the fund administration, repayments, and then using that to give more scholarship. Okay. So that will be handled by the Leap Foundation. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now, taking a step forward, uh, Doctor, I would like to also ask you now, corporates has this concern of talent acquisition and retention where you do not have enough skillful people to you know come into corporates or even if they come the retention is very less so what is your point of view about this and what is the role of leap foundation does it play any role to adjust this situation yeah so as i told you that this is going to leap concept was formed to solve few problems mm. right one is you know solve the problem of the student and the parent yes if they don't have money to you know invest on education mm. we will give you a loan mm. so loan doesn't mean that you have to pay interest mm. you only pay back the capital what you borrowed mm. right that is after completion of the degree so that is solving their problem mm. right second problem is like we wanted to attract high quality students to the private sector also. Mm. Otherwise, what happens is most of the time, uh, you know, top uh, achievers in A levels will go mm. to state university. Yeah. Right. So we are not getting that crowd. So I, we want to attract good brains, yeah. hardworking students into the private sector. Yeah. Right. So that the university profiles will go up when these students do research and you know uh, yeah. highlight uh, yeah. in the society. And finally, as you told this uh, corporate retention and recruitment problem, mm. sometimes you have the required number of heads in the company, but not the re required talent, mm. uh, not the required rationality, not the required de decision making. So actually this particular concept will allow corporates to invest, to groom their employees oh. by investing on their education. Right, yeah. So you attract a you know intelligent child who, yeah. who doesn't have self capacity to uh, enter into higher studies. So you can give them mm. uh, while working for you because mm. we have the weekend delivery options. Mm. So while working for the company, 
student will pursue their undergraduate studies mm. so with, with the support from the company via Leap Foundation. So, you might be paying an allowance to the student, let's say for example, generally an employee gets a certain amount of money. Mm. So, certain portion will not be paid to the employee, mm. it will be paid to the uh, higher education institution mm. where this person get qualified. Right. So, you, you saw one thing is it will help your talent acquisition. So, you mm. invest, I, I always say, invest on a right brain, mm. uh, right individual. So, mm. they become an asset for your company. Mm. Especially this is needed for the IT company. I know I am uh, connected with the IT industry. Yeah. These days IT companies are struggling mm. to, you know, even if they hire the people yeah. with the right talent, they can't retain them. Sure. They will lose them, you know, uh, within two years, three years. Because they are always in the look yeah, to go yeah, they will, because they are, There is a demand, <laughs> yes, right? There is so, a they, demand. Are in, they are uh, always in the look. Yeah. As well as there is a demand, so they have a natural outflow. Okay. <laughs> so, if you invest on uh, a person, mm. at least uh, until they complete their undergraduate studies and pay your uh, borrowed money, mm. they will be working for your company. Mm. So, in these days I feel if you can get an employee to work for about 5 years for a company, mm. that's a good service period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, I think that will solve the problem. So, I, we will actually have a corporate launch later on. All right, but I just want to spread the idea that these sure. kind of options are available. Yeah, this show was an interesting conversation. As we come to the closing, I would like to take a brief message from you to the students and parents who are watching us right now. Yeah, Ashinshani, about higher education, a lot, uh, lot of parents and uh, children sometimes make a mistake. Uh, you know, trying to just follow other people. Mm. But I, I would try to, I would like to say that every child is unique, mm. right? They have different ambitions, right? Mm. And they have different passions and so on and different strengths as well. So therefore, I mean, your child's future higher education should be, you know, customized to your child. Mm. Not just, you know, because other person did this and that, you should yeah. do it. So best thing is, you know, get some advice, counseling, look for options. Look around, you will find plenty of options. Mm. Then go and visit them. Uh, you know, you can, if you come to ESOP, we have 40 branches island wide. You can come to a, uh, one of those centers, get some advice, mm. right? And, you know, see what the future is because you should educate a child not for current job demand because they will not enter the workforce right now. No? So mm. they will enter the workforce in about another five years. Yeah. And maybe they will become mature professional in about another 10 years. Yeah. So you have to think about the future and take the decision now. Mm. So always, expert advice and consultation would be better. All right. Thank you very much. And to everyone who is watching us right now and to all of you who are at this junction of, you know, making your decisions of higher education, I hope through the other than Biz 24 today's program, we helped you in some way. And thank you very much, Dr. Dan Rajpaksa, for joining with us for this conversation, for adding so much value. And to all of you, thank you very much. We shall see you soon with another program on other than Biz 24.